Hello, I'm going to record here um, and show a couple things that Siemens does really well, I think, when it comes to program control. Um, if you have experience with Alan Bradley, you might be familiar with some of this through function block programming or array programming. But one of the things I like about Siemens is some of this ability to do kind of a function block hybrid um, that makes programming a lot easier. And that can be seen specifically in these flip-flops, for instance. Um, typically, if we have to have a momentary bit or momentary input or keep something on, we use a seal in circuit uh, that, we're, that would look something like this here. So uh, I have a program here where I would put in a, a, a rung here and then make sure that the output that I'm turning on is going to kind of keep another switch on. So let me put that in. Um, so this is what a typical seal and circuit looks like, where I have one, one out input, I have another input isolated out uh, under it, and that will that and that will allow me to keep on the output once this stays stays on. If you've been in PLC land at any period of time, this is or motor controls. This is fairly common. Um, again, the biggest issue with this is we may forget to put in something that drops a seal in. Um, new programmers will typically seal in something, but never put in another switch over here or another output over here on the other side of the rung that will cause the seal in to break to drop out the output status and turn that off. Um, so that's a nice little feature and that most most programmers are aware of. And if you, you aren't, then you probably are a new PLC programmer. But again, we call that a seal in. I'm just Xing this out because I'm using this for another class. Uh, basically, one, sw um, one switch per rung or branch here on this network. All right, so I'm going to hide that. But a, a, a set reset or flip flop allows me to do something similar because it allows me to do a momentary input um, and keep something on. Now, the benefit here, though, is, is when it's an SR, the reset is dominant, meaning if this is high or this is, or this is a true statement, no matter what this does here, it won't set the output on. Let me demonstrate. So I will go online with a PLC. So I'm gonna go online with my PLC so you can actually see this in operation. Um, remember, in Siemens land, green is good. I'm gonna go up to my sunglasses and monitor. And you can see right here that this is my, this is a quote unquote stop button. And if I modify this to one, this is a true statement now, but notice that this reset is overtaking my set command. So they call this an SR flip-flop, and this is really good when you want to use a momentary command um, and, and set something with a momentary input. So say that this is false. The other nice thing about this, too, is most PLC programmers freak out at first because a, a normally closed stop button, we need to wire in this with a examine on um, command well in this case i can say when this is false reset when this is true don't so it allows me to match a little bit more to the oops sorry modify to one and now you can see that set and then my cue is turned on now notice right here i don't have an output coil because this right here is actually my output. That's my cue. That's what's being set or reset based upon the commands over here. So it's a really nice feature, especially, you know, and I could branch into this too and do multiple different conditions. So if I wanted to, I could put in another uh, rung, another command here that will reset this or like a, like a memory bit for an HMI. So there's a lot of features that I could utilize with this. So I'm just going to highlight this and toggle this bit off and you can see it stays on. So this is currently off. This is currently quote unquote 
engaged since it's a uh, examine off. Technically, this it's a no normally closed switch that's got power going through it. So it's a one. So now if I toggle, modify this to zero, that's when it will reset. Now, you, this might get confused. You might need to be careful because a, a, a reset set or a RS flip-flop is the opposite, where the set is dominant and the reset is the secondary command. So right now I have a set here, it, basically a mirror image just for sake of argument here. And if I try to, re to reset it to turn off, it's still staying on. It's not until I drop this out. So now this is a one or a true, and my reset is now staying on. And so it's the same concept, except the set is dominant, where here the reset is dominant really helpful bits of programming. Another fun bit of programming is a is the set bit field. Think of this as a raise in, in Allen Bradley land where you can do multiple things strung together. Let me consult my tag table just to show you just to show you. Um, this is where these are my tags right here. And one nice thing about Elm uh, for Siemens, I can just copy and paste multiple things in a row, kind of like Excel. And so I have a lot of memory bits, just one right after another, set up in this 8-bit format, a lot of these, these bytes uh, of, of data. Um, you may call it, if it's an Allen Bradley parlance, that's a single integer. Um, but I can define each one of these bools, and it just automatically saves to the next open slot as I go through. Uh, but since they're all sequentially all ordered together, I don't have to set it up as an array, which you would have to do in Allen Bradley. I can actually clear out. I can clear out all, like all of these at once, or set all of these at once if I had a had something that I wanted to, for example, turn off as a as kind of a reset. So. All I got to do is start with the first bit and then count how many bits after that I want to clear. And that's what that set reset bit field command is. So let me go back to my OB1 and you can see it right here. I have uh, set up a, a watch table just to demonstrate this. And all I did was take my tags and just drop it into the watch table. So this and so all my tags are here. If I do a one scan monitor, it's going to pull up and look, everything is false down here. And so I'm going to see if I can get all this in one. See if I can, um, can get this all so we can see the same thing at one time. And, I, and so as you can see that right now, I'm going to highlight that on so it's continuous play. So watch me toggle this bit right here, see what happens. So starting with M6, starting with M6, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bits after that were turned on based upon the number under my set bit command. That's really cool, isn't it? Because now instead of having to turn a bunch of bits on at one time, I can, uh, uh, doing individual commands to turn a bunch of bits on, I can just turn on a whole array of bits. And conversely, it sets it on so with a momentary input. Conversely, though, I can also reset a bunch of bits. So if I toggle this bit here, modify it, look, all of them went to false. Pretty cool. So these are really helpful to help reset or, or set a multiple bunch of bits or conditions. So like maybe in an HMI program or something along that lines. Uh, one last little bit that I think is helpful is positive edge detection and negative edge detection. So remember, DC looks like this, kind of this, this up and down square wave where, where when something is a Z, this is a zero, this is a one, you know, when I got high voltage. So sorry, my math isn't the best, my drawing isn't the best. And so if I were to 
turn on my so my this would be like my switch is off and then all suddenly on it stays on and then off what the positive edge detection negative edge detection says hey don't change until you detect the positive edge so only change if you see this and it's only for that split second it's kind of it's, you may remember this as one shot in Alan Bradley parlance. So this is a one shot only on the positive edge. That's why there's two bits here, okay? Um, where one is the status of the bit that you're changing and the other one's remembering, is it the positive edge or the negative edge that you're seeing? Um, and so the yellow here, so this is the positive edge, positive edge, positive edge where the other one, the negative edge, would be on this side, and this side, and this side. So this is really good for photo eyes. So say you want to pass through a photo eye, you know, so if depending on the way the photo eye is set up, if it changes, so if, if I'm having a dark sensing, or a light sensing photo eye where it's kind of always you know, it's a through beam photo, photo eye, so it's always getting a signal, but I want some, a process to stop after it goes through that photo eye. My, a part will go through the photo eye. So let me clear, I'm gonna just uh, clear this out. Uh, so a part will go through the photo eye. So this is, a, so let me draw out my photo eye. Here, reflector. So if I have a box come through here, it's going through this photo eye, and if this is going to the PLC, this will give it a, a true value all, all the time. And once this comes through the PLC, so step two, so once this goes through the PLC, it breaks it, goes false. So it transitions from, it, so this is the negative edge. And then once it gets on the other side, so once it's on the other side, completely clear of the photo eye, it's going to go true again. And this would be the positive edge change. So if I wanted to set the one of these up in like a set reset command where that momentary insert, it will help you know turn off a conveyor belt once it hits that positive edge. Um, let me demonstrate this, but I wanted to explain that concept. So right here, I'm doing a set reset because this way you can actually see it turn on. We're gonna check out the watch table over here. So I'm going to toggle the bit and I'm gonna toggle on this, this I'm going to go up and monitor Mbit 7. So here's Mbit 7 here. Um, let me toggle this bit or, you know, so I just took, took it from positive, well, modify to 1. So now, if you look at Mbit 7, it's true, and so is M, um, M24 is true. And now my output 3 is on. So if I modify to zero, you'll see that um, this this is the condition. This is the what the memory of what is, is false. So is it making the positive edge? It's a little confusing memory bits, but I could do this with a switch. I might do that here in a second. But you can see this is still on. Now here, this is a negative edge detection. So if I modify this to one, it should reset, but nothing's resetting until I switch to zero and now everything resets. So I'm gonna do this again with switches. So let me go, let me change this to a switch. Just to demonstrate, cause I have some switches here. So I got two switches, let me download. The online change because maybe memory bits are a little confusing because so this is my this remembers my state of my switch this is the switch itself 
So switch positive. You can I just click the switch on my little trainer. You can see it stays on. Turn on the switch, and now I turned it off, and there you go. So the top here is the, the actual sensor or switch. The bottom here is the actual state of the switch. And now if, if I change this to a regular output, you'll notice that you won't see anything take place because it's such a, it's, it's so, it happens so fast. So watch output number, so right here, I, wanna, I want you to draw your attention to output number three right here on this side as I toggle the switch. It's so fast, you won't, it won't see it because it's a one shot through one scan cycle. So really, if you're doing this, you might need to do a set reset command because that will allow you to set things up. And let me, and I'll go back and show you this. Let me uh, get my, let me go in my set reset. And let me just change this to a positive edge detection. And of course I need a memory bit to remember its state. So MB1. Being used. Okay, so I'm going to download this, and now we put these concepts together. So we put these concepts together, and you can see I'll, I'll turn on my bit, set it to one. Hey, now everything's hunky-dory. Well, I'm going to turn this to one. True. But you can see it, it's staying on. But let me toggle this back. And maybe this would be better. So notice though how I kept this on through one cycle. It stayed on. But now I, if I turn this on, it's going to stay on. So you have to be careful because these this is a one shot. So it's only going to let something through on a positive edge detection or a negative edge detection through one scan of the cycle. Um, so I hope this helps um, understanding these different concepts. If you can understand these, these little tricks and, and, and tools that you can utilize, it makes programming a lot easier. Um, so um, good luck and have fun playing with Siemens.